Well, let's break up the temporal data types into two videos. We're going to cover, say, four of the data types in this video, and we'll recover. We'll cover the other three data types in the next video. In let's do this. I need somewhere to start. So, what we're going to start with is the get date function. The get date function returns the date and time on the server not on your machine right but on the actual SQL server so what we want to do is start extracting certain parts of it and we want to start talking about the different data types here so let's try this we'll declare a date data type you remember the date data type and we'll assign that equal to get date okay. um, you know, I mean I could write it down but we'll just see it here uh, and we'll do a time. So notice we have two data types, the date and the time. Okay. Now what's actually going to happen though, because this is a little bit weird, notice that we are returning the full-blown date and time when we do this. And yet we're, on, we're saying, you know what, I don't want the time. Remember the date only is the date. And we're saying down here, you know what, don't want the date, just want the time. Are we going to get errors because it cannot parse that information? Or will it be able to successfully assign the time from a date time data type? Well, it actually is able to just assign the time. Now you'll notice here that the difference between these data types, this returns a date time data type. We know it's a date time when we look at it because we see that it has, goes the accuracy or the scale is to the millisecond. Okay. Down here when we go to the time we are much more accurate. We're no longer just to the millisecond down here. We've got actually seven decimal places that we're going to. Okay. So that's well beyond the millisecond here. So here we were just for the date, and here we're just storing the time. Now if uh, we did this, and added this one in here as well, you'd see it does get the full-blown uh, one right there. It's the exact copy of what that data is. Okay. All right, and then there's one final one. Uh, we're not going to get into the super precision uh, just yet where we're dealing with seven decimal places. We're going to talk about date time two in the next video along with the date time offset and how we can work with time zones. We're just kind of focusing strictly on the basics of date and time data. So let's do small date time and then we'll check some sizes. Do you remember the difference between date time and small date time? 8 bytes to 4 bytes. And what do we lose when we chop off the number of bytes? We lose the seconds. Okay. So you actually can see that when you look right here. So here's the actual date time value. But here, the accuracy is only to the minute. So it simply rounds that down. Okay, 03 got rounded down to zero. Okay, so all seconds in the small date time are always set to zero. Okay? No matter how many times we run that in the small date time, it's going to be set to zero. Okay? Even though it's 823, it's 25 here. Nope, just rounded that down to zero. Now in a case like this, look at, this is an interesting one. That's why I keep refreshing here. Notice that we are above 30 seconds. Well, small date time rounds that up to the next minute. So we actually have a difference. 41, 41, 42. Once it got to 30, it rounded it up to the next minute. Now you can actually see why this occurs if you add in your data length. So let's do the data length. Uh, link. I was wondering why it wasn't. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And we'll put in the date, and we'll put in the time, and we'll put in the date time, and we'll finally put in the small date time. And what you'll notice 
when I scroll over, to store the date is only three bytes. It's five bytes to take the time. So the date time is eight, but when we get here four, you can see it must be much more expensive to store those seconds than the minute because we take the three plus only one byte for the storage and we're able to accomplish all of that just like that. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Tell you what, let's stop here. We're going to come back in the next video. I want to talk to you about date time two, the differences in that. And we'll talk about date time offset. We'll talk about UTC dates. We'll see you in the next video.